Welcome Heights Church family, friends, and whomever is joining us this morning. We're glad that you are with us. I'm Kim. I'm Jacob. So glad to see you today. Babe, I know you love Christmas, um, but I, this has got to no, go. No, I just want to hold on it's to it. I know it's a couple days ago, but I still, little, no, oh gosh, love Christmas. I know she does. I miss oh, it already. Alrighty. Yes, you do. Thank you for coming to our live stream service this weekend, as well as next weekend. We are going to be on an online platform only to give our volunteers who have been giving tirelessly of their time a nice rest. Yeah. And I want to give a big shout out to our kids ministry people. If you don't know that a couple months ago, we hardly had any volunteers left through COVID. We started meeting again at services at 8, 30 and 10. They've managed to pull off enough volunteers to put a full kids program from zero all the way to fifth grade. And the generations is meeting. That's our uh, middle school and high school at the 8, 30 service. So that's just awesome to it see is. them pull that off. It is. We've even had people volunteer for the outside parking team in case you've seen them trying to roasty toasty themselves next to the fire and keep warm. They're not only there to make sure people safely get from their cars into the building, but those who are watching via FM transmission and the screen outside that are safely in their cars joining us, that they know that they are part of the community, they're home, and they have a host or hostess. We also have people serving on the sound team, on live stream, on media, service hosting, preaching, uh, sanitizing seats in between services. There are lots of people who are volunteering and stepping up to still serve and be a part of the community. Yeah, we just appreciate all you. And if you're tuning in today and you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, just take a moment, either comment. We were trying to encourage you to interact with one another. I know church feels different when we're watching it from our living room, but like and share. I know this message today is going to bless somebody. Absolutely. And we don't want anyone to feel disconnected. So, guess what we're going to share with you? <gasps> the Heights app. The Heights app. In you case you it haven't, you, I don't know, we maybe people haven't heard times. about it, maybe once or twice. But if you go to your Google Play Store or your iTunes Store, you can search for Heights FC as in Foursquare Church. Download it. It's completely free, but it has ways that if you need prayer throughout the week, if you want to know what events are coming up, what's happening within our community, and or what groups we have going on, what the last message was, all of those resources are right there at your fingertips. In fact, we have a couple exciting things happening in 2021. Absolutely. If you go to the Grow and Go tab, you'll see that in January and also in February, we have a couple new groups. We have Sharon that's kicking off a grief group. So uh, this has been a hard year for a lot of people. So this is a chance for us to support one another. Amy Charbonneau is kicking off How to Study Your Bible. And then just stay tuned. Uh, we'll have Rudin and other discipleship classes kicking off. But I did hear a little birdie tell me that there's something exciting that you and some ladies are spearheading. We are. Sorry, guys, not to leave you out. But women, there is some stuff rolling out just for us in 2021. So stay tuned for more information information on that. This morning, we are going to have Sam leading us in worship, and Anton is going to share the message with us this morning. If you don't know Anton, Anton is our church planter. Him and his uh, wife uh, moved out to Davenport this year in the midst of COVID, and they've really gotten a chance to know their communities, and they started to plant the gospel and form people around them. And we're hoping that by uh, fall of 2021, they'll be our first campus in Davenport, a church plant out there. And so he's come on staff with us here at the Heights Church, and he's learning all the ins and outs. And part of that is learning how to preach. And so we're excited that he has an opportunity to share the word with us today. Yeah. But before we get to the message, Sam's going to lead us in worship. And the first song he's singing is Great Things. And I know some people are thinking, 2020 hasn't been that great. But I will tell you firsthand that I have got to witness miracles happen in people's mm -hmm. lives, that I've got to see people saved by the power of Christ and understanding that his death and resurrection and bone jarring love for us conquers all. And so as much as 2020 hasn't been people's favorite year, God has been in the midst and he has been doing great things. And you know it, in 2021, he's going to continue to do great things. Before we do that, will you please bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've given us. For the family, the friends, coworkers, people just surrounding us that maybe we forget to be thankful for. This morning as we worship you, as we pray, as we praise, as we hear your word, may our hearts be open. May our minds be willing to intake exactly what you have for us. And may we go into our week changed because of your word. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dad. 
I tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe in that you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve in. You take the broken things and raise them to earth. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated. With the one who has conquered it all. can finally see it, teaching me how to receive it, to let all the striving cease, this is my victory, cause you are my champion, giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, and I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I'm seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. and shout every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me and when I open up my mouth miracles start breaking out I have the authority has given me when I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me Father God, God, as much as we complain about 2020, God, thank you so much for giving us the ability to praise you in these moments. And God, may we just look back as we enter 2021 that, that we can see your glory, your work, your mighty hand in 2020, and may it shape 2021 
to just be a work that only you could do through us. Father God, and um, as we bring this message, Father God, just open our ears and open our hearts to what you have for us today. And I pray this all in your heavenly name. Amen. Good morning. It is really good to see everybody at home in their jammies, just enjoying coffee on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Anton, and I was asked to speak a couple weeks ago. And honestly, when I was asked to speak for the end of the year message, my, I didn't want to. I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want to close out a year. I didn't want to close out this year, if we're being totally honest, because it's 2020, and nobody wants to deal with that anymore. But it got me thinking, that little bit of this is 2020, it got me thinking. I, I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring something joyful. I wanted to bring something that 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 we could focus on the good, something of substance. And, and I wanted to defeat this rhetoric that 2020 was a dumpster fire. Because it, it, it was. Sometimes it, sometimes it was. There, there, were, there was a lot of ups and downs. But even in those dumpster fire moments of 2020, we got to see individually and as a church body, we got to see God's promises and God's faithfulness just rearing through those storms every single time. So coincidentally, this morning I've titled uh, my message uh, just simply Dumpster Fire. And, and your first thought is, because this is my wife's first thought, was, Anton, that's going to be kind of a hard argument to make, that 2020 wasn't a dumpster fire. But I said I wanted to speak joy. I wanted this to bring joy. I wanted to focus on the wins that we did this year as a church. So let's unpack that. At, at the beginning of this year, if you can remember through all of it, at the beginning of this year, we had this word and it was build. And it wasn't hard for us as a church to, to grasp that word. 
right? To, to envision, build. We had great vision casting at the beginning. We had, we, we, we had JJ's in our sights. We were going to build. But that word, that action, that mindset went so many different directions. In fact, that it went so many different directions. Sometimes it, it wanted to make our head spin. But not once, not once as a church body did we ever say, I don't think that's the direction we're going to go. I don't think we're going to pursue that. In fact, we said the exact opposite. If there, if there was a small chance of hope, if there was a, the tiniest glimmer of hope that we could build, that we could build a relationship, that we could build within our community, that we could build with our neighbors, that we could restore faith, then we pursued it. Even that small chance, we, we pursued it fervently. So my big idea is this morning, my big idea is that when we answer God's call, we get to be a part of something so much bigger. With that word build, a lot of us, a lot of us thought we were just going to build a building. Like I said, that, that was the vision cast. That was the, the, the whole project at the beginning of the year was the building. Get the community center up, get the hub rolling. And we were going to build a whole entire spot to bring life to Airway Heights. All right? that, that was the vision. And I love that vision. It's still happening today. I mean, you've driven by it a hundred times. But what we didn't see, what we didn't see, like Jacob said last week, is, is, is this big picture. This stuff that's happening over here and this over here and over here because we were focused on this. Not only did JJ's get a facelift, but... I personally have seen relationships restored. I personally have been a part of neighborhoods that have that have come back together, that are throwing block parties again, even in the midst of COVID. And if you're like me during this year, through the ups and downs, my faith has been restored like never before. And I think here at the Heights, we, we are really good about celebrating the wins. We are really good about celebrating Sundays. We're really good about celebrating small victories. But I want to take a look at a little different way of, of, of how Paul did it. So we just finished this, this series in Philippians. And if you, if you go back and turn to Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, um, we'll kind of unpack that a little bit. So as a guy who is jumping into this church plant, me and my wife, we're, we're jumping into this church plant business. We're, we're, we're meeting people. We're, we're helping people develop. And when you, we, we've learned very quickly that when you get a letter from a guy like Paul, it wasn't always the greatest. In fact, if I got a letter from Paul right now, I would probably just pack up and leave. But Philippians was, was the exact opposite. It was a polar opposite of that. It was this huge, encouraging letter. In, in right, right in the beginning, in chapter 1, verse 3, he says it. He says, every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. That's, that's you, church. That's us. Trust me, we're, we're, we're doing this. We have, we have made leaps and bounds this year. I've been meeting with other church planners, with other churches, with other church bodies, with other communities, and, and, and going out and, and starting the network. And, and they are so much supportive of our mission that it's this. When they think of us, they thank God. Whether they're thanking God that churches are being planted out of the heights, that we're, we're, we're meeting our community, that we have drive-in movies, that, that we're impacting our community in a way that's, that's good, that's healthy. There are other churches looking out for us. 
There are other churches praying for us. There are other churches praying for individuals in this church that we continue to grow. But I want to keep looking forward. I do. So we, so we know that there, that there are other churches, there are other apostles even that are thinking of us and, and praying for us and continuing to encourage us. But I want to keep looking forward into the next year. <clears throat> We've picked up a lot of momentum. And by looking forward, we have to go backwards sometimes. So we're going to flip back to Back to Nehemiah, we're going to be in chapter 8. But just a little backstory on Nehemiah. Everybody really knows him as the guy who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, which is true. But what happened was, is he was, um, he was a cupbearer for King Artaxerxes I. And not, not a cupbearer as in he just held the cup and tasted stuff to make sure he wasn't poisoned, poisoned at, at all. Nehemiah was a guy that was so close to the king, he acted as almost a personal advisor. That's kind of the role of a cupbearer took on. So if you were, if you needed something from the king and you could convince the cupbearer to do something, you pretty much had it in the book. So the cupbearer, the, the title of itself, just kind of had this political role. There was a bit of weightiness that came with that. And Nehemiah had heard that his city had just been destroyed. And not like recently destroyed, but like it had just been obliterated. And there were still people living there trying to thrive. God had left this little glimmer of hope in Jerusalem. And, and so Nehemiah prayed. It just, it just wrecked his heart when he heard that. And so Nehemiah prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and, and he just got this overwhelming feeling that he was supposed to go back and rebuild the wall. But for that to happen, he would have to leave his job working side by side with the king and go take on a project that may or may not ever, ever get off the ground. So he went and asked the king. Not only did he get extreme favor from King Artaxerxes I, he got extreme favor from God. This was God's call for Nehemiah, and Nehemiah answered faithfully and became part of something so much bigger. So long story short, he gets there. He gets to Jerusalem. He vision casts of, of, of why this wall needs to be rebuilt. He starts motivating people again. He starts getting people on board to start rebuilding and, and celebrating again, even the smallest victories. Right? They, they, they had enemies all around them that were opposing this building of the wall, and Nehemiah just kept motivating and going and going. Hey, guys, we have to keep going. And long story short, the walls ended up getting rebuilt and everybody lived happily ever after. But after the rebuilding of those walls, something amazing happened. This is the part that I want to capitalize on this morning. After the re rebuilding of the walls, the, the people through, through the physical labor of building, through the, through the physical labor of building, uh, and, and, and building some structure around their city so they had protection again, had started to begin this heart change. That renewal of faith in them started happening again. They started remembering why, why they were God's people. They started remembering why they needed this protection. There was a lot of behind-the-scenes spiritual growth, much like that's happening at the Hub right now. I have not volunteered there near as much as some of the other people in our church. And I continually hear stories about contractors who are working there who get to walk around and see those prayers on the wall, who get to walk around and say, man, can you guys pray for this? Because this is happening and I don't really know what's going on. Even through that build, there's this spiritual growth happening behind the scenes. 
And, and much like the guys in Jerusalem, we get to see that God's love is not failing. God's promises are not ending. The promises and, and blessings that he bestowed on, on that group of people, building that wall, lasted centuries. In fact, they're, they're still held up to this day. That heart change that began on that build swept through the city. It, it began this cultural shift. And it was unstoppable. Church, we have people in Airway who don't even go to this church, who are not a part of our church family, and they are showing up on demo days. They're stepping out and asking, how can they make their community better? How can they make their neighborhood better? How can they connect more? How can they, how can they help with demo? How can they help with construction? How can they help with this or that? How, how can they serve? Even after the demo, we still had non-church members asking how they can become part of the hub. It's not just us that believes in this. It's not just the heights it's winning. It's this whole community. This, this culture shift is, is beginning to happen here. This culture shift of, of me, me, me is changing to give, give, give. And it's happening in Airway. It's happening in Davenport. It's happening in Spokane. It's happening across the West Plains. There's this, this spiritual breath of fresh air that is just overwhelming sometimes. We have people who have stepped out in our very church. We have people in, in this church who have stepped out and, and began prayer groups. We have people um, who have stepped out and began prayer groups at work who are praying with other people who, who may or may not even believe, who may believe differently than they do. We have guys who are meeting before work at 6 a.m. and have been meeting faithfully. We have new life groups being formed. We have, we have new serving opportunities being formed in, in different communities, in different neighborhoods. We have, we have different neighborhoods that we're, we're being able to reach because of how much we're hearing God's word. <clears throat> this, that, that is nothing. That has nothing to do with, with you or I or, or pastors Kim and Jacob. That is all to do with God moving and us being a part of it. This same type of celebration happened in Nehemiah's day when they, when they finished the wall. Nehemiah called, Nehemiah called Ezra forward. Ezra was uh, the the priest at the time, so you had this political weightiness happening in Jerusalem, and, and then you had the priests, and they were working hand in hand. And, and Nehemiah just was, we have to bring the priests forward and and, and help kind of guide this renewal of faith, and they're renewing the covenant. And so Ezra steps up and he, he reads the book of the law of Moses again to, to all of Jerusalem. And what happened is it says in Nehemiah 8.12, it says, So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal, to share gifts of food, to celebrate with great joy, because they heard God's word and understood them. They heard God's word and they understood them and it caused for the celebration. There was a renewal. There was a rebuilding. We did that, church. We did that this year. This is a celebration. Much like it was then. We heard God's word. Build. We, we heard the word build, 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 build. And we, we, we do, again, we really didn't know build. If you're like me, I have never been a part of the whole start to finish on a building. I've been a part of almost every aspect, but I've never 
been start to finish. And most of us had no idea what we were doing when we were building, I being one of them. But that didn't stop us. We never looked at our community. We, we never once did we look at our community or the hub or our neighborhoods and said, man, I just don't know God. I just don't know. No, we heard God's word. We understood God's word. We didn't have all the bits and pieces, but we understood. We understood that God was moving in the West Plains and we had to be a part of it. So my main point is this. Faithfully, faithfully answer God's call to do. If you feel like God is calling you, now is the time to do. And church, I, I don't know what He's calling you to do. He doesn't tell me that. He tells me what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe He's asking you to start a life group. Maybe He's asking you to start a prayer group. Maybe He's asking you to be more involved in your neighborhood. Maybe He's asking you to trust Him, to trust Him with your house, to trust Him with all of your finances. Maybe He's calling you to volunteer in children's or to stand at the door and just smile at people as they walk in the door. Whatever it is, don't hold back. I want to encourage you, church, don't hold back and into whatever God is calling you to do. You have a chance to help build something now here in our church, in our community, that is going to last. Nehemiah returned to Jerusalem and his heart broke. It just destroyed him to see where Jerusalem was. The wall, their only defense was obliterated. The morale was down. They were against all odds. And Nehemiah's heart broke. He had just gotten a free account from the king to rebuild. He had gotten blessings from God and King Artaxerxes to rebuild. He had all of this stuff behind him and his heart just broke. But during that time, Nehemiah felt the, ne the need to remind the people of Jerusalem of God's covenant with them. That God's promises, God's faithfulness, and God's blessings didn't stop with their ancestors. Those carried on for eternity. So yes, answering that call to do, to go out and, and do what God is calling you to do can be terrifying. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes we don't get all the bits and pieces. And again, last week Jacob said, sometimes we don't get the 30,000 foot view. We don't, get to see every, we don't get to see the big picture. We get to see what God's asking us to do. but do it boldly. Nehemiah had, again, his heart just wrecked. He had all the permission from the king and, and from God to go and do. He had to step away from his job for an unknown amount of time to hopefully inspire people who are so down and out to get a project going that may never even get off the ground. But he went. He heard God's word. He understood them and he went faithfully. When you do that, God 
it's amazing. You may end up in kids' ministry. You might end up planting a church in a far and distant land with no Walmart. You might end up impacting your community or neighborhood. When we hear God's words and understand them and act on them, great things happen, even in the face in times of adversity. It does. So imagine if we did this. Imagine if, if, if we spent time in our own homes praying and listening. Imagine if we kept going on this momentum that we built this year to continue building. What if we individually got a word from God to ask us to, ask us to go and do? What would that look like? What would it look like for you to be on point for Jesus? Most importantly, what would it look like to have your heart broke so much for something God's calling you to do that it demanded action? Lord, I want to pray for us. I want to pray for this church, Lord, that we that we get to celebrate the wins this year, Lord, that we get to keep this momentum going for 2021. Um, Lord, just bless us. Help us to be still and hear your word. Help us to act faithfully, to act boldly, Lord, to answer your call. In your holy name I pray, amen. Anton, thank you so much for that message. And Sam, thank you for worship. What a great way to kick off our morning or tune in in the evening, whatever it looks like. All of those words meant something. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, did we build this year? Technically, we're still building yeah, the hub. There has been a lot of building. <laughs> but what have we been building within ourselves? Yep. Are we, did we give ourselves opportunities to grow? Or did we just kind of plateau? Or did we even start to take a little bit of a nosedive? Because that's what 2020 has been to a lot of people. But I know that not only is God's word true, but the more that I have pressed into him this year, it's impossible to plateau when you're seeking relationship with your heavenly father. Yeah. It's impossible to not let him affect you when you're having this give and take and inviting him in. So yes, building did happen. It's still happening. But we all have the opportunity to continue to grow in our faith, to grow in community, to grow in our marriages, in our parenting, in our friendships. And I encourage you all to continue to grow as we look towards 2021 and what it's going to be for each of us. Yeah, before you tune out, just to, to remind you, as we're looking at the end of the year, uh, we still have an opportunity to invest in what God's doing here at the Heights Church and uh, through Transform, through Remodel yeah. the Hub. We're still uh, process of raising money and completing that project. So if you haven't done your year-end giving, I would uh, go to heightschurch.tv. There's a give one there. You can hit transform give, or uh, if it's your tithes and offering, you can give through the app or online too. So we just appreciate that we have an opportunity to look back and really sew into what 2021 is going to look like. So next week, uh, again, you get an ch easy chance to invite some to church. Yeah. It's going to be online and uh, we're just going to be uh, just a wonderful week. I hope you have time off. And if you're working, then God just be with you. So be blessed. We love you so much and we hope to see you soon.